all signs are pointing to a recession happening in the next couple of months to a year. We're hearing it through various news outlets. So today I'm going to talk to you about how you can recession proof your direct response business. So whether you're selling supplements and information product, a business opportunity, or some kind of subscription, you are in a category seen as non-essential or a luxury item. So there are indications and there are a lot of people who say, well, you know, this is when, you know, these types of businesses are not going to do as well. So I will talk to you and give you some strategies specifically to use when you think that there's a downturn in the economy or even to use in slower periods like summertime or after the holidays, depending on when your ups and downs are in your business. Now, my name is Maria Sparagas. I am the president of Direct Paint It, and we help tons of merchants scale beyond six, seven, and eight figures. And these are merchants that are working in direct response. So I've been doing this for the last 10 years. And I can tell you, I've seen strategies used by tons of merchants to overcome, um, you know, lulls in demand or recessions and so on and so forth. So listen up and I will definitely be giving you a lot of tips and a lot of things that you can use in your business today to make sure that you weather any storms that are coming. And if the storm doesn't arrive, you could still use these strategies to grow your business and make more revenue. Now, um, you know, what happens during a recession? You know, winners just keep winning, right? People have money to spend. Obviously, they have less money to spend, but they will be decisive on where they spend their money. So they may not be buying as much, but they still will be buying. Now, one thing that you should see as an opportunity in your direct response business is ad costs might go down. Uh, it might be cheaper to, you know, get these customers to acquire these customers. So the important thing is as your competitors are hunkering down and maybe not spending as much money on ads or on acquiring customers, this is when you should just continue and still continue to try to acquire customers. And if you have a successful strategy, you can even double down uh, because it might be cheaper and you might, you know, eventually even gain more market share because, it's it's a known thing that as soon as you know the the there's talks of recession or the economy is contracting a lot of people just start spending less money including businesses so a lot of businesses that have prevailed have been businesses who actually doubled down and got more uh, advertising and more, you know, uh, try to acquire more customers. So this was the case for Ford in the thirties when there was, um, you know, a recession and actually it was a depression. We should say in the thirties, Ford just kept advertising and kept pushing their products and so forth. And that's what made them to the giant that they are today. While other companies were, you know, holding back, Ford decided to double down and increase their spending and get out there. So um, that's just one of many, many examples um, that you can see that actually it worked. And this was a depression. Hopefully we're not getting there. We're just going to see a little small blip and we'll be able to, to continue on our way. So keep in mind that, you know, consumers still have a budget. Consumers still want these items. People will always be spending money on themselves and, and, you know, there's supplements and things that make them feel better. So you have to just make sure that they're spending the money on your product or service. So make sure that you're still keeping you know, um, all, all your, your, your ads and your, your, you know, making sure that everything is efficient and working well. Now, how are you going to stay ahead of the curve? Obviously spending money on ads and acquiring your customers or your cost of acquisitions, you know, may go down if people start spending less or other businesses start spending less, but there are some specific things that you can do to ensure that you stay ahead of the curve and outbeat your competitors. So as I mentioned, invest in your, in your advertising, keep advertising and keep doing that. Now you can also focus on a couple of things. So customers who are buying from you, try to get them to buy more. So focus on your upsells, look at what upsells you have, look at what other products that you're offering your customers in your cart. And instead of focusing on getting the customer in the cart, you should nurture the sequence, meaning once the customer is in the card and he buys that first product, uh, your initial product, you should try to upsell them to other products and other services before they go. Obviously within reason, you don't want somebody coming in to buy a $49 product and ending up leaving, 
with thousands of dollars, you want to kind of nurture that relationship. But, you know, if somebody's buying a weight loss product, maybe they can use, um, you know, something to better their skin so they can look better. It's important that you invest money and that you get good copy and good marketing for your upsells as well. And obviously maintaining the customer relationship throughout the whole experience. Now, the most important thing, um, and I think this is something that a lot of merchants don't really pay too much attention to, especially when times are good. So now that, you know, as things are contracting and, you know, people are spending less money and so forth, it's going to be important to really focus on tech. Now, what I mean by that, everybody kind of has, you know, CRM, shopping cart, gateway, that standard stuff, but it's how you use this technology and what you can do with this technology to increase your sales, getting a customer in the door, doesn't mean that he's actually going to buy or she's going to buy. You have to make sure you nurture that relationship all the way till the end, till you get an approved transaction. Now, here's a couple of things that I think are going to be very big in, in the next couple of months for the competitors or the businesses that are actually going to win this race during the economy. So um, email capture on website and cart abandonment. So there are services out there where if a customer just comes onto your website and they're browsing and so forth, their computer is has a, an ID, like a print, a digital print. And these services, what they can do is they can get email addresses for you of these customers because of their profiles and so forth. I had an episode not too long ago with uh, Chad Hamzy, and I'll link it down below. And he talks all about a product called ID Engine, which can identify 70% of people or web surfers on your website. So if somebody doesn't buy, you'll actually be able to get their email address and try to convince them later on to buy or email market to them other products and services. So, you know, make sure that anybody who shows some kind of interest to your site is on an email list where you can market. So these, these types of services like ID engine um, that Chad had mentioned is a great service. There's also cart abandonment, uh, cart abandonment series and email series and things that you can do. If somebody kind of partially fills in a, a checkout page, it could be that they got distracted. It could be that, you know, their, their, their phone died and they weren't able to, to finish. So, you know, email to these customers effectively, maybe give them a 20% discount to buy, to finish the purchase and so forth. So use this information and use the customers that kind of walk into the door, which means like get onto your website, um, in order to, to sell more, these are, you know, already people who are interested in your product and service with a little bit of technology and a little bit of nurturing, you can get these customers to convert and to buy. Um, now, obviously I am a payment processing expert and I know, I know a lot about payment processing. So I would have to talk to you a little bit about understanding your declines and minimizing your refunds and chargebacks. Um, now, understanding your declines, we may start seeing more insufficient funds, depending on what price it is of uh, what the price is of your product or service. We may start seeing more issuing bank declines, which means, you know, the customer's bank is saying no to this particular product or service being purchased by their customer. So it's important on a regular basis, depending on how much your transactions are and your, your transaction volume is maybe once a week or once a month, you pull the data from your gateway and you sort it by decline message. So you can start understanding why customers are trying to buy, but their credit card is being declined. So if you have a lot of insufficient fund uh, customers or a lot of insufficient fund um, declines, why don't you try, for example, doing installment plans for these customers or offering them a lower priced service or a lower priced offer? So you can, you know, try to get them in the door until things kind of ease up for them and then you can sell them other things. Um, if you have a lot of issuing bank declines, that's a big indicator that you have foreign buyers. So if you're a US merchant and you're selling a lot to Europeans, to Canadians, to Australians, you might start getting a lot more issuing bank declines because their banks, their local banks are seeing this more of a, as a risky transaction. So it may be time to add, you know, foreign currencies or um, different payment modes to accommodate these different markets. So that's a very simple thing to do. I know it sounds like it's going to be complicated to add different currencies and so forth, but, you know, if you're working with direct pay net, 
with us or, or with any processor, most processors have these capabilities and they can just, you know, flip a switch and all of a sudden you're accepting Canadian dollars or you're accepting, um, you know, a localized payment mode in another market. So make sure you talk to your payment processor and, and see, you know, what, what's happening with these types of declines, um, get information. And the best thing to do is really to get your numbers understand how many declines are happening in each category and then attack each one uh, by one. Like I said, insufficient funds is seemingly an easy one, you know, because there's installment things and there's different ways you can combat that. But every situation is different and every merchant is different and your business is different. So it's really important to know your numbers and to know, you know, um, a couple of tips and strategies and talk to your providers and see what solutions they have available. Now, there's also minimizing refunds and chargebacks. You know, obviously, as the economy contracts and people are starting to get more credit strapped, you know, they, they're looking at their monthly statement and things that they didn't maybe impulse buys or things that they, they don't really use or need. They may result in chargebacks or they may call you for refunds. So one important thing to do is use some tools. There are some tools that you can use, for example, uh, frictionless 3D secure, which is kind of like a digital fingerprint of the person's computer. So when they they buy from you, you can do this verification and they can't come back and claim they never bought that product or service. Um, you can, you know, have an easier way of canceling the product, for example, if you have a subscription. So there's a lot of things that you can do to minimize your refunds and chargebacks. If you have, for example, a digital product and somebody calls in and wants a refund, why don't you just give them an extra month for free and then say, you're not going to start the subscription but you don't lose the initial sale and, you know, they get some bonus by, by staying with you. Um, in terms of chargebacks, obviously these can get very, very expensive. So having more self-service options and having more communication with your customers and, you know, making sure that they're involved in whatever product or service they bought, they bought is key. Now, uh, last but not least, I would talk to you a little bit about customer service, but not customer service as your customer service agents. As I just kind of briefly touched upon with refunds and chargebacks, your customer service is very important. So if you have a subscription, make it easy for customers to cancel. You know, the harder it is for them to cancel, the more likely you are to see chargebacks on your, on your statements and on your processing uh, account. And that in fact will be more costly and more frustrating for you because there is a cost to a chargeback. So you lose the sale, plus you lose uh, an extra fee that can be, you know, 35, $40, depending on who you're, you're working with. So have some self-service cancellation processes, if your customer service is overwhelmed and your call times are really long and so forth, you know, IVR services can be very helpful. Now we all, you know, have gone through IVR services that are very frustrating and, and make you press a whole bunch of buttons and talk to a whole bunch of different computers and nobody wants that, but you can make a, a quick decision tree. For example, if somebody calls in and they need a username and password reset, well, that can probably done be done very quickly by them, you know, inputting their email address or seeing their email address. And then, you know, you can automate that. Or for example, if they want to cancel, have them go through um, an IVR process, asking them just a couple of questions. Um, and then if, you know, they, they really, you know, seem like they want to cancel, then let them cancel. Um, just different things that you can do to automate the process. I know a lot of merchants are very against allowing customers to cancel without speaking to them, but this actually causes more frustration, causes more chargebacks and causes, you know, more losses for your business. Also keep in mind, the more you have people call you, the more costs you incur for your customer service department. So a customer service department is necessary, but it's also important to look at um, your customer service processes and see where you can kind of optimize. So you'll save money on staffing, you'll save money on, on chargebacks and refunds, and you'll also save on customer frustration, right? Customers are not going to be frustrated working with you and they'll want to continue doing business with you. So I have a, a whole bunch of more tips and, and, and things that we can do. I'll link a couple of episodes down below. If you have any questions specifically, feel free to reach out. And I wish Wish you the best of luck and do not uh, take this as a bad thing. A, an economy contracting is an opportunity. Always remember that. And I wish you the best of luck in your businesses. Thank you for listening.